Watch this. Let's just get to the nitty and gritty of the number one thing about why this is so cool. It has a steering wheel. Watch the end there. You have got to be kidding me. Hey, friend. Smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. And then we started adding timestamps. So a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. Hey friends, Shane from HotWrench.com and uh, I'm going to finally make a video. It's been quite some time. Can't even blame just being busy with work as much as the fact that I finally bought a house in this crazy Phoenix market and I'm able to put how to wrench all in one spot and function a lot better in my full-time job and not have to commute to the shop and so on. So super stoked about this. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump into this video so not be one of them YouTubers and show you exactly what I, I wanted to show you on this brand new bore scope and how I was, you know, wrong in my last review of thinking it's the last one you'd ever need or the fact that you'd ever want more than one. So I'm going to jump into that. But I just want to tell you, if you stay tuned in the video, I'll kind of give you a quick little tour of what I've gotten accomplished so far, some of the projects in the shop and kind of what uh, I expect to do in the future here. So let's get into the bore scope and then we'll come back to the shop. Watch this. Let's just get to the nitty and gritty of the number one thing about why this is so cool. It has a steering wheel. Watch the end there. You have got to be kidding me. I'm going to do a two-stroke on this PW80. Uh, and then I've got a little XR100 four-stroke that I'll uh, get down in. I've got those since I'm at the house. I've got a couple holes on the ground where I want to see what's living in it. So we're going to stick it in some holes that way. And then, yeah, let's do it. I'm super excited about this. And to top it off, before I finish editing this video, I ended up deciding to use it to look in the walls to check where wiring was. And I captured this. How awesome is this? So if you're looking to punch your drywall and see if you got any potential risk on smacking some wires there with your stud finder uh, lying to you, wait till you see this. Way cool. All right. In my last review, I did this V-Bore bore scope and this thing was so rad if you haven't seen that video i'll put a link up above to it but it's where i dropped a washer way down inside a transmission cavity externally but uh wanted to dig it out the zoom features the flip screens you know everything about it i was like no nah, you'll never need another one this thing's the best thing ever how are they ever gonna do themselves and then they shipped me this one and i'm like no stinking way I'm going to show you what's so cool and different about this one. I'm going to switch the camera up and get it assembled. But the raddest thing about it, the little why you should keep watching this, besides a million other reasons. I mean, this thing is so cool for the fact that this is wildly flexible compared to previous uh, designs. They were a lot stiffer. And once again, why you'd ever want two of something, you might want to hang on to your old bore scope. Sometimes it's nice to have a stiff cable. The screen is detachable, nice for storage. So let me get the camera on the tripod. I'm gonna assemble this. I've already went ahead and charged it, super stoked. It's got a couple other features that I don't recall on other ones and it's making me think, did I not read the manual all the way or did I just miss out on that? Seeing it available on this one made me think, hey, that would be really handy. Let's switch up the camera and get to using this. All right. So it's got a little locking tab to release that. You'll hear it click in place. Hear that click. The other thing is this VVOR comes with the SD card. I pulled it out of rates at 32 gig. That's super cool. So lots of adjustment here we can play with. Okay, let's go ahead and you'll see here on the top, we got a power button. This is menu, zooming in and out. Uh, I believe if you hold this too, it'll flip the screen. And then you have uh, toggling back between photo and video, and then to just take an image. So similar to their other models. 
first thing we see the light turning on. So I want to show you this too. You can control how bright this light is, what the intensity is. So there it's off. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three are off. Okay, looks like the first one is the brightest. Okay, so I'm almost always leaving that there. Um, I could see right now we are on a photo. So let's take a photo of me. Okay, I'm seeing the SD card, full battery. Now if I go up here and go to the that photo button, I could see what's in here, okay? So let's go ahead, get out of there. We're back to the normal screen here. And this is this point I was get, getting at that I was telling you is that you could take and rotate that back and forth. That is just gonna be so wild. So you imagine if you're in a cylinder and you wanna come up to yourself or to the top of the cylinder, or you wanna go sideways. Now I could just go here and if I want to get a quick glance at the other side, boom, I'm there, okay? And I'm a big fan of using the video feature when, when doing a board scope inspection, because then you can just slow it down and look at the video and pause it in any place. And you don't have to worry about, you know, what exactly, you know, you hoped you caught. So let's see if I can get, I don't care about the image on here real quick. I want to play with this other feature that I saw that seemed pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and see if this will flip the video. I don't know if I hold it. It does. Okay, so it's making a video right now. And I'll just kind of move this around so that it's not still. And then all I could do is touch it one time. And let's go ahead and look at the file menu. Okay. Now let's see, how do we toggle over? Okay, I'm using the plus or minus here to toggle. Okay, so here's the video. Let's hit okay. And we're watching it right here. Should see me move it in a second, that's awesome. So I'm hitting the okay button to shut that video on and off. Let's see if this moves around to fast forward. This will flip back and forth between images without having to go back here. So once you're in one, you can just, you know, boom, 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 keep going, which is nice if you're doing troubleshooting and you want to do that quick. Let's see if I go back and hit, uh... okay, I think we're live now. Yeah. So if you hit the file button there, here, I'll, I'll do it one more time. We're, we're able to look at things, right? Okay. Use the the file button up top to enter exit that that phase i want to show you the feature that i think is super rad on this so let's say you've got this just sitting on a workbench or maybe you've got it bungee corded to a seat on a motorcycle or a steering wheel in your car whatever whatever you're doing and let's say you get in somewhere and you dial this baby in and you're like oh oh i, I want to look at that okay but you you want to get access to your hands back or you want to get in a more comfortable position or whatnot to study that, you know, photo or whatnot without having to do a video, watch this. If I take and I'm going to hit the OK button, you'll see pause. What that does is freezes the screen so I could sit and now look at that and go, oh, there's the bolt. OK, now I know where I want to go get it. Or there's the connector. Or there's the mouse damage or there's the a cylinder damage, whatever it is. And then to release it, I would just go back and touch it again. And now we go back into a live mode. That freeze frame, I think, would be really cool from a troubleshooting point of view. All right. As rad as this is, some of the other things I noticed here I did not talk about was the charging is USB-C. Thank goodness. Love that now that everything seems to be going that way. Makes it handy. Does come with this cable. One other thing it comes with is a little protective uh, cap for the lens. What I did not see in this in this bore scope was like all the typical attachments I get with the other one. So I'm kind of curious if on the last one, because these were very similar to a lot of other scopes that I've had or tried. So here's that magnet one. I'm curious if that will fit. Nope. Man, this is small. They really made a big deal, but 
This one is 6.4 millimeters, which is gonna get in some pretty small holes. All right, let's put that back with the old one. All right, once again, maybe that's why you're gonna want two scopes for different purposes. There's the zoom. Let's try the flip screen. There I flip the screen. There I'm flipping it back. Hold it. So that's cool. So there's my nominal direction and what's doing is it's flipping it upside down. You can see it's flipping it that way. Let's see what happens on the other side. Okay, so those two buttons are just toggling back and forth. I'm seeing a little indicator there. That's going away. All right, I went to the ad and grabbed the specs for it. It's got a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which they're saying on a single charge will give you somewhere between four and six hours of constant use. I mean, that's a long time thinking about leaving that on for even a couple hours. Typically when I use a borescope, I'm using it for maybe, you know, five, 10 minutes or something and then I'm done. So I don't think you have any worries on charging time and nothing's phased our battery power so far. All right, if I go on the top here and hit the settings button too, it's pretty standard. I can pick my language. To enter that screen, I'll hit okay. And then I need to do the arrows, or excuse me, what you call like the, the plus or minus to toggle uh, back out of there. Let's uh, go back in there on the language. Go to menu, I'm gonna hit okay. And if I hit this, I think I saw something like 10 languages on there. So obviously gonna stick with English. Date and time, label screen, screen saver off, automatic shutdown off, format the SD card, default setting. Let's uh, run through these, see if there's anything else. Oops, I think there was just one more. What version? Okay, all right, we're looking pretty good there. All right, it's time. Let's go use this thing. I still just can't get over this. Look how tight that thing goes. Oh, man, that's wild. All right, let's get in here. The reason I kind of wanted to show... Uh, the, the whole view of everything I'm going to do is, is thinking about the couple different ways we could use this. So with this kind of handle and setup here, I could just set this on the ground and then I'm going to adjust my steering wheel a little straighter. And then let's see how it looks. Okay, I've, I've went ahead and put the piston already at bottom dead center. One thing that I can see it's gonna be kind of cool about this too, until I was using it, I was thinking, I really need like a third hand if I wanna rotate, steer, and do everything. And I thought, well, this is gonna be kind of hard. I got a couple different choices. I mean, I can just like rest this up against something. It's got a nice flat back on it, I like that. And then I can go ahead and do what I need to do. So we'll try that view. All right, check out this quality. I can get down in here. You gotta be really careful on two stroke to not get it snagged on a sharp edge of a port or whatnot. But look, check this out. I'm gonna go right in there and I can see even down in the port. This is where you can play with that light. I have it on the brightest setting, but pretty cool. And I noticed that the more you move around, it's having a hard time focus. So if you wanna get somewhere and just pause, you'll get a much clearer image. You'll see some better stuff coming up here. But look, I can see the uh, condition of the cylinder. Uh, give it a second here to focus and you'll be able to see, you know, uh, hey, do I have any crosshatch, any scoring, what do I got going on? Look at that piston, super clear. But now check this out. It's going to get awful blurry because I'm using the steering wheel. I'm going to flip. You can actually see all the lights of the LED, you know, off the cylinder wall. But look at that. There it is, the cylinder head. I am looking upside down and boy, this thing was apart not that long ago if it's that clean. Uh, I could see if I had any detonation on that two-stroke cylinder head. You can see the spark plug threads even looking backwards. There's my finger playing around. How stinking cool is that? A uh, little tricky on the small diameter. Let me talk a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, another good shot of the cylinder. Okay, so if we think about this now, to be able to get that to to bend over itself, you would have to be in a bore that would have at least, let's see, let me grab a caliper. I'm gonna need to be in a bore with at least We're about 37 millimeters, but then even as I go here in that corner, let's see where I end up. Yes, at 30, let's say 39, 40 millimeters, you'd have to be in a hole that was at least 40 millimeters, and you'd have to be able to get this all the way to the edge and then get it to curl. And since you're starting on the spark plug and going down a short bore, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to get caught in a port or something where I'd have to take this head off. Little trickier, like we said on smaller holes. Let's jump to the four stroke and see how it works, even though it's a small bore four stroke. One thing worth mentioning, I haven't turned this off at all. I've just been leaving it on the whole time where I'm usually pretty paranoid and feel like I need to turn the batteries off. So, battery technology, everything's just gotten so much better. What I learned from the, the first use on this is I really don't like to hold it. It's working pretty good to set it on the ground and then just do what I want to do. So let's uh, make a video. Look at some external quality. Remember how we could flip things without, you know, having to flip the, the camera cable itself? So if I do that, that flips it that way. There we go. I have the lettering facing up, if you will. Look how clear the numbers are on that carburetor. And I'm not even sitting still, I'm moving around, shaking too much. You just pause for a second, you get real clear. You could take advantage of using that for looking at engine numbers. You can see here, I'm just kind of poking around to see how things look before I uh, jump down into the engine. All right, let's head on in. <clears throat> well, yeah, this cylinder's got some use on it. It's sat a lot of its life too. You can see by the rust rings. That's a good indicator there. But let's see what we have here. You can see I'm just bumping the kicker to get that piston at bottom dead center. You'd be very careful not to damage your lens. Yeah, some really good shots. That cylinder is not in good shape at all. That's going to need some attention. it up see if we can see the valves are we going to get lucky in the small bore and I can see a spark plug oh there we are looking at the valves looking at the cylinder head for carbon like I said just find a stopping point let it focus like something like that that is rad Another good shot of the spark plugs and the valve. But just kind of playing around with that steering wheel while I'm twisting it. I could even see the lettering on the valves right there. Now I'm just spinning around the cylinder. 
Wow, that's cool. Really trying to play with the limitations here on, you know, what is the distance and, and then flipping that steering wheel around in these small bores. And now we are back at the bottom and ready to pull up. This bike is about ready to get back on the road too. All right, game time. Oh yeah, that is so cool, look at the cross hatch. Now this is the same engine that I did on the last Hatch, get right down to it. Woo! Got a little stripe there. Let's look at that little stripe. Well, that's no fun. All right, let's. Uh, now this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. That I can get right up on. I finished looking at the valves here and then I thought I'd pull it out and take a look at the drivetrain, how you can go down and take a look at the uh, the belt or the pulleys and in particular on any engine that has a cover hard to access the front pulley or sprocket. This is super rad but the Harley Davidson itself is is much more difficult to get a view of that front pulley to where you could jack the bike up and spin it around and actually check, you know, all 360 degrees or all the cogs of it. That's pretty cool. And then obviously I could check the belt as well. As you can see in here, you could check the witness marks of how it's wearing for alignment. A lot of cool stuff you can do there, obviously. And yeah, let's uh, take a look at the files. Well, what you think? Let's look at some of those files. Looks like I need to flip the screen. Let's get out of there. So to view your files, it looks like you want to have the date back on the on the bottom here. Otherwise, the file management is upside down. So let's look at that image. So I say OK. And there we are. How stinking cool is that? Back here. So everything I took. Oh, let's look at that. Uh, I don't know if I want to look at it. Look at that little cylinder uh, scoring some for some debris or something got in there. Evidence is evidence. I mean, you can't get away from it. So one of the advantages of these tools. So way cool. Well, Vivor, I think you outdid yourself on this one. I would say, though, that this couldn't be my only bore scope for the fact that I like those attachments on my other one. Where it has its best place is if you don't have to go very far, because number one, it's a short cable. It's incredibly flexible. I mean, it's, it's unbelievably flexible. But that makes it hard to control at a long distance. So to think that I would go into a wall or something like that, unless I had conduit I was going through to guide it, I don't think this would be the best tool. It's not rigid enough for that. But if you just need to get beyond that standard vision of sight to where you need to get into a hole that you have close access to or a crevice or something else, I think this is fantastic. The ability to steer this thing, such a wild idea. Uh, you know, the light did everything it did. The video photo capture, everything else was awesome. Uh, the fact that the screen's detachable to, to fit back in your box or break it down a little bit, I think is cool. You know, I'll probably just store it in this manner. You know, it is nice that this is detachable too when you think about it for just leaving the handle and whatnot in your toolbox. So you just grab this and you want to take it home, you charge it up and then check out your SD footage on your computer. I think I will probably like that. Another thing that I found to be really useful that I didn't see anybody else's videos is talking about this design here, the way this is flat. And you notice every time I laid it on the ground, it didn't want to roll or, or get away from me. I thought that was really cool. 
you know, having this idea here of where straight is, I think that was something I learned and thought was pretty cool. But yeah, this thing, this thing's amazing. And if you are a technician and you're needing to prove things to your customer, you've heard me talk over and over that you can't beat a borescope for showing the evidence. If a customer comes in, wants you to diagnose a motorcycle, says, hey, I'm not getting the best gas mileage. I think my performance is down. You can go in there, borescope it, and go, look, here's what I found on your cylinder. This is what we could do to fix it. You can't beat evidence. Like that's, that's pretty wild. The fact that you could even do that with the customer right in front of them, go, hey, let's just poke, uh, poke our heads in there and see what's going on. It gives you some real trust in that needed repair. Do it yourself or yeah, maybe you just need to, you know, check it out for yourself. Like, do I need to take this apart? If I go down in there with the bore scope, I had good compression, good leak down. I go down there, it turns out to be perfect. I'm going to take that thing apart. I'm going to figure out like, hey, maybe I got a fuel problem or ignition problem. I could chase that without even touching the motor, but I'd be able to get that confidence of adding this to my diagnostic troubleshooting list that compression's good, leak down's good, visual inspection's good without taking the motor apart. How do you beat that? Uh, so super useful. I saw the current price on this was $101, I think. We've got a 5% off coupon that we are able to offer our How to Wrench fans as well. But super rad, my friends. If you haven't done so, make sure and like this video if you liked it. Share, subscribe, all that great stuff. So as promised earlier in the video, I said poke around the house here a little bit and show a couple different uses that I found for this tool. But, you know, this is me looking inside the garbage disposal. You know, it'd be great if I had something stuck in there and decided, hey, you know, <laughs> what do I got going on here? So cool diagnostic tool for that. And then here I'm going under a shed that I got in the backyard where I actually saw a squirrel coming in and out. And I really wanted to know what I was dealing with. Do I have a nest? Do I have family? What do I got going on? Doesn't super bother me, but just kind of wanted to see what I was dealing with. And it really allowed me to just take a look at the condition of the wood flooring and see what kind of shape it was in. What I wanted to do next is they advertise how you can go around some pretty tight bends. So I just kind of took some PVC pipe on the ground here and tried to see if I could steer around that corner. Now this is only half inch PVC pipe and as you can see it, it worked pretty well. A little bit of kind of you know moving back and forth so I could you know make that corner but it was definitely doable. Watch this. So I'm just gonna go through the pipe here. This is where when you have like an edge like that you get to kind of steer up and down and twist around but look I'm gonna poke right on out. come out the other side with some victory and you'll see me uh, playing in the grass with it here and then I'll go ahead and just uh, remove it uh, back out and way cool up next I was really curious about this this is where one of my water valves are for my lawn system sprinkler and there is pretty big hole under this concrete I just couldn't figure out if something dug this hole out or what the deal is but instead of just going and trying to backfill it I could use the scope to get in there and really look at you know do I have some water you know run out or damage where there was a leak at one time it's like old mud puddle or what you know what am I dealing with I could see I have quite a bit of concrete but when I really stopped and settled with the camera definitely got some critters I found some snake skin some feathers so I got some stuff kind of living down in there, but now I know I can go ahead and fill that and hopefully just keep an eye on it and see if anything digs it back out. All right, here's what I'm going to end with. I'm going to do a full video on this one just for anybody that wouldn't really know how to hang an accessory like this on, on a wall, but turns out this wall wasn't studded behind it. It had like half studs, if you will, so... I didn't want to go into concrete, didn't know what I was working with, but I was poking my nail through, checking with my stud finder, and now check this out, and this is why this tool is so stinking cool, is I like to take that nail and kind of, once the stud finder says where it's at, I tap to either side of it, and now with the scope, I can go in there and actually, you know, pull that screw in and out when I'm on the side of the stud, and see what I'm working with and check this out if I would have just banged that screw in there and missed I would have poked that wire I mean I would have created a world of trouble then it's a whole deal of pulling drywall fixing wires running wires I mean just a total mess so I mean like this tool paid for itself a hundred times over just in this one application how stinking cool is that so once I finish that video I'll put links and my friends that is it go buy an awesome boroscope
Have a great day as always. Like, share, subscribe, and keep wrenching.